I'm going to discuss a few words in continuation of this conviction, belief, and superstition connection. And uh, one of the things that uh, has been said before in previous videos was what a pagan was. And we know Gentiles were considered pagans unclean. And uh, to make it understood that a surname is a pagan name, it is not a Christian name, it is not a God-given name, and it is separate and it is distinguished from such and has always been that. But when you merge the two together, you give that up and therefore when you're moving that into the aggregate of common under the surname, the commoners, those with this common Roman unbelieving name to identify themselves as not having a covenant with the true God, uh, your beliefs are subsumed and gone. That means that you cannot take priority over those. You cannot act upon your faith when it goes contrary to the aggregate. So just as homosexuality would be condemned by the Bible, in the aggregate of societies of the American Constitution, the uh, Canadian uh, basically form of government, it is allowed. And therefore, it's got nothing to do with biblical, because anything goes as long as it's licensed or legal. So therefore, yes, you can have these views in the aggregate, and they cannot be, uh, they cannot be uh, spoken against because that would be considered hate. So you have to understand that when you're involved in an aggregate, your belief system and what you have, especially if it's uh, Christian or Bible-based, is thrown off to the wayside because you are not able to act on that belief when you are involved in the aggregate. It is just not allowed. And therefore, in fact, when it comes down to it, which is going to happen in the future, people who operate a state-organized, what it appears to be a Christian faith, religion, using the tax-paying common name, the public name, the surname, they would have to give up all property they have if their doctrines are preaching something that would be contrary. So if you preach against homosexuality, it is only a matter of time before you'll lose your charity status because that is against the democratic system, which says that whatever has been legalized is okay. Now the word pagan just so people know in clarity, we have a book here called A Browser's Dictionary, A Compendium of Curious Expressions and Intriguing Facts. And in it, it was dealing with the word pagan, which means a non-Christian believer, right off the top. So how could you have a Christian name and then a surname that says pagan or Gentile? And we know many Mormons believe uh, that anybody who's not a Mormon is a Gentile or an unbeliever, but that would make no sense since they carry a Gentile name. So it appears they don't know that very fact or someone at the top of their religious order or legal organization of their religion based on the money in the secular side is keeping them back from that knowledge. They don't want them to know because then they would have a conscience issue to not be a participant of such a faith. Pagan, not only meaning uh, non-Christian, also had the word paynim in there. Of course, the word pay, which seems to always lead to uh, this idea of having to pay something, a binding agreement, a pagus. And it went right to a very, very important um, usage, which was a civilian which led right back to, again, people's misunderstanding because there's many Christians out there today who believe that if they say they're a civilian, they're just not in the military. But they don't realize a civilian is in the militia, has just not been called to arms as of yet because they're still bearing arms privately. And we know there's huge movements in the United States of many groups that claim they're Christian by appearance, but said they're willing to, they, they have the right to bear arms, have firearms, and actually harm their fellow man, which is totally against the teachings of the Bible. But they still believe this because their ministers or their pastors or their reverence or their priests have said this is okay. Remember, you must go to the scripture to find out whether or not you're doing the right thing or the wrong thing. And then you will know what is morally right and wrong. 
not based on someone feeding you spoon-fed nonsense off of a pulpit. Now, we're going further on uh, conviction, belief, and superstition. Again, conviction, uh, convicting or being convicted, the appearance, very important here, if you show up in the wrong name, the surname not being your property, that is the appearance of guilt. Guilt is guile, lie, fiction. Or a condition of being convinced, a firm belief. So many people are firmly believing that that surname is theirs, but it is not. They have no proof of such. They have no first-hand knowledge that it is. Just because their parents were using it does not mean it's theirs. In law, mere belief can misrepresent a fact. The given name is a given, but it was not Caesar's property. It is not Gentile property. It is only belonging to those who accept Christ and therefore make this publicly known. And if they do not declare this publicly and remove themselves from the other, abandon the other, forsake the other, relinquish it, restore it back to Caesar, render it back, they do not render back that surname, then they will be identified as under the surname. And all property and everything they have will be under that. We uh, go further to the word uh, belief, but interestingly, just before we go further with the word belief, you'll see the word belie. Because if you don't put the F in the word belief, you get belie. And we know about belial, which was spoken of in the Bible, was, of course, referring to Satan or evil. Belie is a false idea to be lied. <laughs> idea or ID, misrepresentation of something. If you misrepresent your real name with a fictitious name, then you are a liar. And you are in the Roman Empire of liars, romancers, those that tell about fictions. But they mix truth with error to do that as we spoke earlier in an earlier video on fictitious name, Black's Law, 4th edition. Belief, the state or habit of having confidence in any person or thing. Faith, trust, a belief in God. Okay, well, remember that if you believe in God, well, then your faith is well founded because trust in God, not in the princes of men. Well, all the surnames relate to feudal princes of men who have placed that as state property, public property, taxation property. Property that deals with the aggregate of those who join in together in society and say that they will work together. But we are not to be together with them. It said in scripture, be ye separate. So there's certainly a conflict in what is going on in our understandings. Even in the word civilian, or pagan, it was dealing with land that was no longer under dispute technically. But, but we know that according to scripture that the meek will inherit the earth and the promised seed of Abraham were given the earth. And the land would never be sold forever. But the land will be sold amongst pagans because pagans can sell a lie amongst one another. And therefore they set themselves for sale as a prostitute. Going back to belief, it says mental acceptance as true or real. Acceptance of a statement or fact. What did you believe in the statement that your parents filled out? Well, unfortunately, they were misrepresenting a fact by putting the surname down on the document. But at the same time, maybe they should have been knowing as a Christian they wouldn't be putting their Christian name down on that document because that Christian name was not theirs. Now, if they were using the surname at the time, well, then certainly they would have to render to Caesar what is Caesar's and restore it. But the, sur but the given name does not belong to Caesar. The given name is Christ's property. That's private property for only those that believe and make it publicly known. The surname conceals who you are. It's like a cover. Belief, the thing believed. A statement or condition accepted is true. Well, in the law of man... Fiction is esteemed as truth. Lies. So the surname is esteemed as truth. So on the birth record that we talked about earlier, the statement of birth record, the surname was esteemed as truth. It says that your parents said that you had that attached to your name. So therefore, they informed on you as an informant. 
bringing about a criminal action against you. They witnessed against you. They denunciated, denounced their Christian name, and basically walked into the surname. They were denunciators on this document, not renunciators. You have to look up those two words. I'm not going to get into it in this video. You'll have time to look those words up. Belief is also an opinion. So they didn't say it was their opinion. So if you look at this birth record, they don't even seal it. The statement of birth is just an accusation. It's not sealed by the Registrar General. And that's why they only register events. They registered a birth date event. They did not register people. Now, remember, people is an interesting word because God chose a peculiar people and the aggregate of society does not always include all the people that are there, that live amongst them. Just because we live amongst them doesn't mean we're part of them. So we have to be very clear on that point that determination of what God has allowed you to choose under free will to be there on the good side or the bad side, the state has no authority over. That's up to you. But if you've been energizing the wrong name and you're in their aggregate, in their common share of what they use to identify people of their nations, their G20, their Gentile 20 nations, with the surname, then you are a participant. And you cannot go into the court and say, I'm not the person, because that would make no sense. If you have evidence to the contrary with your signature subscribing, subscribing, under a scribe, a law, a scribbler, he who writes his own ordinances, that's all they are as scribblers. They're the same as what Jesus said, woe unto ye scribes. I think he was meaning woe unto ye scribblers because they were just scribbling the Talmud and all the nonsense that they were going to infect society with that had nothing to do with the Torah, the Ten Commandments, God's law, the Bible, None of the writings that were there to help those that were of the New Covenant, the Messiah, the Chosen Nation. Now, when we look down the word belief, it says uh, belief, faith, uh, conviction, what is held true. Belief is the general word. His belief in superstition gets him into trouble. Now, uniquely, we found the word superstition connected in here to make us look further beyond conviction and belief. Now, could the surname be a superstition? Is that possible? Well, faith applies to a belief without proof based on one's trust in a person or thing. I have faith in his ability to succeed. Conviction applies to a firm belief based on one's own private certainty after one has been convinced by someone or something. It is my conviction that he will succeed. Again, what's your belief? Well, if you believe in the Creator, you believe in His Word, the Bible, then you basically have a firm belief in Christ because He was there at the beginning of creation when, and He has a vested interest in you because that is found in Genesis. But if I have a firm belief in a lie, well, then I may be under the father of the lie. Maybe I have a belie, not a belief, leading to a false belief, something not really held by anything real. <clears throat> and God gave you a real name, so you can have firm belief in that. That's truth. That's real. Man has everything made up, constituted. So when we go to the word superstition, leads us to many things, and it actually led me to a video that I had basically told people about in the past, and I think we may have actually made note of it uh, in our previous uh, YouTube videos, which was uh, the humorous uh, video of disorder in the court with the Three Stooges uh, back in the early days of, of basically film. And you must watch that because that word superstition comes up in the movie, or it comes up in the episode of disorder in the court. And it is a very, very humorous uh, expose on the court system and you need to watch it as is the Adams family the court episode Adams family go to court you must watch that if you can get that 
Those are all available if you research and go look for it. Now, it says it is, so if we look at the word superstition is an unreasoning abject and fear of what is unknown or mysterious. Now, most people have no real understanding of that surname, yet they want to believe in it. And they're concerned and fearful not to use it. And in fact, the enforcement, the armed forces that are out there, the police, are enforcing public policy to use the surname. People using something under license, and therefore they have the authority over that. But why would I need a license to be who I truly am? But I would understand it would only be honorable if I'm using someone else's property to obtain a license for it, even though it may be fraud. Because it is fraud when you're using someone else's property and identifying yourself as being that entity. A belief or, or practice, which is superstition, founded on ignorant, fear, or mistaken reverence. It comes from superstitio. Honest. Originally a standing over in wonder or awe. Super above. Those words lead back to the surname because when you look up the word surname, it comes from super and over and above. And they're saying that the surname is over and above the Christian name. Why would you need something like that? Only a superstitious individual would think they need something more than what they need. And the surname was never required in the common law, even in the common law history, because the common law was things written and unwritten and under Christianity. Christianity did not have a process of putting a surname together with it. So there's many people walked around only with their God-given name. And it was only for labeling outlaws that people achieved or had surnames. So most people don't realize it's not, a, it's not some kind of uh, emblem of good. It's an actually badge of fraud. Now, when we go to superstition, it says to the Puritans, easily enough, it says it was superstitious to keep Christmas. This is out of Oxford's Dictionary. It was superstitious to keep Christmas and to deck the house with holly and ivy. Now, I know if I talk to the aggregate of Christians who believe their state-organized religion said it's okay to celebrate Christmas and deck their house with ivy and holly, no problem, because their pastor said it was okay. Not because the Bible said it was okay, it's because they said it was okay. But if you look at the whole practice of Christmas, Christmas was only attached to pagans. And in fact, there were periods of time it was completely outlawed. Now, I looked further and there was another quote in the Oxford Dictionary under superstition. It says, Jarman Powell's Devices 2, this must be a book, section 13. Superstitious uses are declared to be where lands, tenements, or goods are given for the maintenance of persons to pray for the souls of dead men in purgatory or to maintain perpetual obits, lamps, etc. Well, the Romans were very skilled at coming up with what they considered to be dead body corporate perpetual registrations that would continue even after someone was dead. They would still continue. The corporation would continue even though the people have disappeared. And therefore, this links right into this. So what people are really doing when they're going into the court, they're in a eulogy. And they're actually, what they're doing is they're paying respects for a feudal lord's surname that they're using. His property. His pagan property, and they're paying respects to the dead. And that is how it works. So, unfortunately, man's world works on monetary, secular, godless fees and money. Whereas spirituality is invaluable. There is no such thing as an actual price. Your life is priceless. And when Christ purchased it with his blood, being a perfect man who had never sinned, he paid the price and he was considered the unblemished lamb. Therefore, unlike man's system, when you're a criminal and do not show up to court or evading them, you're on the lamb, so to speak. But in reality, when a Christian has no longer any part of their world, 
has restored the property back to the party whose property it is and no longer uses it, he would be on the Lamb of God. And therefore, he's exempt and immune from prosecution, even though they will try to prosecute you according to Scripture, because it says you will be persecuted for his namesake. You'll be brought before governors and kings for his namesake, for a testimony against the Gentiles. So it didn't say you weren't going to be tested. Evil will try to test you to come in. But it is your requirement to tell the truth. And law must follow truth, which is one of their maxims. Fiction must yield to truth. So yes, you will be spitting venom, so to speak, at the evil or the lawyers who operate as devil's advocates against Christ because they advocate penalty under the law because they get paid for such. They are just pimps of prostitution of all the people who work under them. And because they have a license to sell legal advice to profit in this, they will never tell you nor help you down a direction of being a moral Christian and doing the right thing. They will not show you your unalienable position under God. They will only show you a fictitious, alienable debtor system that they profit from. We hope that you do the research down these, because if not, you will unfortunately be bound with a bracelet as they put on the child in the hospital, a brace, an encumbrance, a let, a hindrance, a rent, to rent you out, to release you, release you as a hireling, not debt free, they release you into debt, into another contract of debt not exempt, discharged, as was Christ's position with us for his death for us, blotting out the handwritten ordinances of the law that was written contrary to us and took it out of the way. Not against God's, but against man's. So we hope that uh, you understand these, these terms. Uh, you take the time. Uh, there's other words that we'll get into in the next video, which is dealing with the word charm. Uh, because charm has arm and many other th words linked to it that we can get into definition and that's really what they're trying to do in the courtroom because you're dealing with pagans, magi. But remember, if you were involved in participating in, you are dishonoring them by going into the court and working contrary to them when you know you were a participant who caused the penalty and the action that has been brought upon you. So if you were using something that was evil and something that was the property of another, and then you go into the court trying to use this information against them, it will not work. But if the truth be beside you, because you have not contracted, you have returned the property of another, and then they are prosecuting you for following Christ, well then Christ's blood the Spirit, the Comforter, will be with you because you will be told what to say in the moment. You will not have to worry about your words because truth will come out. We hope these videos will help you.